discussion the part of discussion which we are going to have is about innovative financial instruments now financial instruments we are very familiar with there are different categories of financial instruments which we have learned starting with shares debentures bonds or maybe we have learned some of the instruments like you no know, bank fd fixed deposit or recurring deposits or a uh, uh, lot of insurance products like endowment policy we have learned different type life insurance product we have learned about mutual funds we have we have learned about other type of possible investments in the financial market so all these will be brought under the category of financial instrument that is anything which qualifies for making an investment right will be brought under the broad heading of a financial instrument now when does the term the key term innovative come into action okay the context of innovative financial instruments comes from the need of the market maybe the need of the investors or it might be owing to the need of the people who come to the market for meeting their financial requirements so that's why innovative uh remains to be a revision of the existing model uh, uh, an idea maybe a feature maybe a particular uh, option available to the existing institution to suit the varied needs of the investors or companies who are coming to market for resourcing their fund then we call them as innovative uh, financial instruments because bond is a basic debt instrument debenture is a debt instrument we know that right same as share is a unit of ownership is an instrument which uh, which exhibits the unit of ownership so when we are trying to bring some new features when you are adding new features to the existing uh, instruments we call them under the category of innovative financial instruments okay so this is the background for our today's discussion now going with a financial instrument this is a general definition which will qualify in all condition a financial instrument is a contract that gives rise to a financial asset definitely there will be say when i am talking about an investment in a mutual fund there is my investment is qualifying for a financial asset in the form of mutual fund the fund which i own with some company right so that's why it gives rights to a financial instrument a financial asset for one entity the pe the person who is making investment in this case i am making investment so i am having a financial asset but when we look from the perspective of the other person to whom i am investing for him it's a liability which needs to be paid back to me on a future date on the maturity date along with the rate of interest So that's why we say that it's a contract that gives rise to a financial asset on one part, at the same time financial liability on the other side, on other entity. So in our contract, which I was mentioning, I would be having a financial asset. Suppose if I've gone with investment in the fund of say SBI uh, mutual fund, SBI blue chip fund. So definitely SBI blue chip fund is having a financial liability. which needs to be invested properly and the returns and the principal had to be returned to me as an investor so that's why we say that always financial instrument is a contract a contract between the investor and the company which is resourcing fund in this case it's a contract with me uh, me as an investor and sbi blue chip fund as a company taking my investment or grabbing my investment so this way it is a contract one way it is an asset for the party who makes the investment and the second way it is a liability for the person who go with uh, taking up the investment in the name of the party who had invested for making profit out of it right so they will make profit and share the profit with the person who had made the investment so this is the general context where the simple definition which is applicable in all cases when we talk about financial instrument okay so that's the first part which we discussed what is a financial instrument now the second one is uh, what leads to or what are the primary reasons for innovations that are happening in a financial uh, market with respect to financial instrument see all of us uh, like uh, 
newness or variety or choices suppose if i am every day you know my son often say oh, uh, every day when i was a child you used to tell me you wear this you wear this you know for this function it was so boring he always tells me now i have the freedom so likewise we like the freedom to choose our investments right so uh, uh, that choice or that component called choice is ensured by companies through innovation through innovation in different financial instruments so that's why we say that innovations in a way is because of the demand coming up from the market from the financial market now looking into the the primary the core reason for the innovation happening in the market the first one is companies would like to tailor the products according to the needs of consumers say so there would be consumers who prefer long term investment there would be consumers who prefer investment in the short term category for some time and then they would like to convert that into long term there are consumers who prefer regular return for the investments some of them would be preferring uh, no regular returns but a higher capital appreciation some of them will be preferring uh, less of risk and more of uh, no a uh, safety for the fund some of them would like to balance between the risk and the growth opportunity right and some prefer to invest in agriculture sector some other investors might be uh, wanting to invest in pharmaceutical sector so likewise the wants are different the preferences are different and to make the product as suitable as to the needs of the consumers uh, the there is innovation that is happening in the financial market there are different types of so say for example earlier insurance uh, products uh, did not have a, 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 a maybe a coverage which was under the pandemic category most of the insurance products did not go with it now insurance companies are thinking of bringing that into their coverage because that is a demand coming up from the consumer so based on the changing environment the demand the, the requirements of the consumers would be changing accordingly innovation will happen in the financial market right so that is why the first reason would be for tailoring uh, according the tailoring the financial instrument according to the needs and wants of the consumers second one is as i said no based on our needs some of us maybe now we have a regular income coming up so i don't uh, prefer to have an income uh, on a regular basis or on a monthly basis so i would like to invest that for a long term right or someone would like to you know uh, don't believe in long term investment would like to switch the market in between that's what i put as put or a put and call option selling the investment in between is called as put option buying it at times call option for buying the different options available for me to buy the it's a derivative term terminology that is used in derivative instrument but this applicable in this derivative you are yet to learn so i'm not discussing that but it is applicable in the context of uh, financial market uh, so that is why put option talks about selling our financial instrument whereas uh, call option talks about buy, buying different types of financial instrument So that maturity period, uh, or as we say, the period of investment can vary with investors. So that, uh, according to or to suit the needs of this uh, interest of the investors, we have different types of products with differing maturity periods, differing uh, return options. So that can be one reason for bringing innovations in the financial instruments. And uh, the third one is. Uh, nowadays see maybe if you look in, uh, in in indian scenario maybe like uh, 30 years back you did not have an active capital market the number of investors or number of companies coming into capital market were limited because uh, it was not uh, accepted as a uh, prominent investment source or maybe uh, there were less number of investors in, with respect to capital market than we talk from the perspective of total population but now things have changed capital market is regarded as uh, an efficient market for sourcing of fund by companies and for investment by different investors by retail investors as well as institutional investors so that is why uh, we say that because of the preference for companies uh towards capital market 
when it becomes more attractive people think about bringing more options in the market that also is one reason for the kind of innovations that is happening in the capital market with respect to financial instruments now we know that capital market is related with long term market uh, which includes investment for a longer period so companies generally require fund for meeting their capital requirements uh, for a longer period so that's why they come into capital market by issuing shares or debentures or bonds as the case may be uh, now uh, the the last term is uh, to make as attractive as possible see in the morning uh, no we would like to when we go for uh, an important position i um, mean important function we would like to may uh, present ourselves as attractive as possible right if it is an important function important day for our a life or maybe for our career we want to present ourselves in the best possible way same as the case uh, with respect to financial instruments also the marketers want these instruments to be most attractive to the investors right so that they come for investment in those instruments so in order to make them very attractive to the investors they add many features to that like after some time you can convert that into shares or maybe after some time you are given with a discount or maybe you have given with you are given with the right issue option or offered with the right issue option when it is exercised by the company so likewise you want your instrument to be more attractive you want to bring that newness into the financial instrument so in that context also innovation is an inevitable part of the financial uh, market so all these are the primary reason but if you ask me tell me one reason why there is innovation happening in the financial market i would say it is because of the changing demand because of the demand from the consumer side uh, who prefer different different options for making investment who would like to have different choices while going with investment that is a primary reason for innovation that is happening in the financial instrument in within the financial market okay now going further in our uh, in our class we would be going with few financial instruments which uh, may be a, which had been introduced in the indian financial market in the last 10 years now 10 to 15 years okay uh, now uh, this is floating rate bonds now bonds uh, the the general the general notion is it's actually a debt instrument carrying a fixed rate of interest that's a general understanding about a bond as an instrument in the financial market now floating rate bond the first bank to or the first institution to come up with such an option was sbi state bank of india and um, sbi introduced a bond with fluctuating with fluctuating interest rates the return for a bond is what we call as interest and this interest generally is fixed at the time of issue of bond that's a conventional kind of bond as a debt instrument now this innovation which is brought in by sebi link the interest rate into a fluctuating mode by linking into the bank interest rate see so in this case they any benchmark it could be linked to any benchmark as decided by the issuer but uh, here in this case in case of uh, Uh, SBI it was linked with the bank's term deposit rate that is long term deposit rate so banks they went with uh, linking that with a long term deposit rate and uh, accordingly the investors got a uh, preference uh, for a choice that is they they could fluctuate uh, they could gain high rate rate of interest when the interest rate of banks also went up because uh, earlier they used to have a problem where bond interest rate remain fixed but the interest rate that has been offered by banks may be if it is a market where there is uh, economic uh, no boom or as we say economic prosperity the interest rate offered by banks can go up so in that case those who made investment with a bank had a higher privilege with those who made with investment in a bond so banks uh, you no know, sbi came up with the first uh, came up with this idea that why don't we introduce a floating rate of interest for the bond so that that also that instrument also becomes as attractive as a bank deposit so this was the underlying principle when we brought in the floating rate of bonds so floating rate of bonds is a concept where it links with the uh, the, the the rate of bond is linked with 
some benchmark maybe bank rate of interest maybe uh, liber uh, no or maybe it can be liber so it is linked with some benchmark so that it's not fixed it's moving according to the conditions in the economy so that was an innovative idea which was brought in with respect to bonds now the second one which we would be discussing in our today's class is zero interest bonds now uh, as i said no bond is an instrument uh, with a uh, lot of uh, you know uh, conditions or as you say formalities where we say that the interest rate for the bond is fixed so that we when we talked about the floating rate of interest the interest rate was linked with the with some benchmark now in this case it's little different in this case the companies who went with issuing this issued bonds with no interest no interest but literally what they did is they brought the bond uh, at a huge discount when compared with its actual face value suppose the face value of a bond may be 100 rupees the bond was issued at 50 rupees so on the spot you have a margin of 50 rupees because the actual value of that bond is 100 rupees but the bond was issued to the investor at 50 rupees so there is a gap of 50 rupees may, may not be huge okay i just uh, said a huge amount for you to understand but that uh, you don't you may not be having that margin but there is a margin of minimum of 10 to 15 percentage which will be very much linked to the available interest rate of bonds but the advantage here in this case is the investor does not have to track with the changes that is happening in the market with respect to interest because they are being issued uh, with bonds at a deep discount deep discount so that there is a difference between the actual price at which they got the bond and the face value of the bond uh, mahindra and mahindra hp leasing and finance these were some of the companies who first innovated on this and brought in this instrument in the indian market so now the nutshell is these types of bonds do not carry any interest rate but the benefit to the investor is the lesser rate at which they purchase and higher rate at which they can think of selling it in the market say i bought the bond at 50 rupees uh, no which is having a face value of 100 rupees so in the market i will be having an option of course, there, there will be a designated time period after that, I would be able to sell the bond at maybe higher than the face value or maybe near to that face value, at least a face value. So I will have a fixed set uh, profit no matter what happens to the interest rate movements in the market. So that again was an innovation with respect to bond as an instrument. Now the third one which we would be discussing in our class is very much related to zero interest bond. Here, this, the difference here is the difference between zero interest bond and deep discount bond is here also the bond is issued at a discount, huge discount. Where the primary difference between uh, the zero interest bond and deep discount bond is deep discount bonds are issued for more than 10 year period. Generally, they are issued for 15 years. Uh, IDBI, Industry Development Bank of India, was the first financial institution to bring this in Indian markets. And this is a primary difference. Here also, it's not linked to the interest rate. There is no fixed interest at four, that's been promised for these bonds. These are issued or fixed period. But what we have to remember in this case is these would be issued at deep discount. There is no factor called interest that is associated with these uh, bonds. And there are uh, certain uh, alterations. Basically, deep discount bond is they are issued at a deep discount, at a huge discount for a longer period. But there are certain variations that has been brought in by different companies over the years. That is one is zero interest secured premium convertible bond. Now what we have to understand here is part of this bond which is issued under this category can be convertible into equity share at the option of the investor on a future date, generally after one year. So that is why we say we use the word premium convertible bond. So these bonds are without an interest. They are issued at a deep discount. The, uh, the profit for the investor is difference between the face value and the issue price. But they have one more additional feature that has been added to that. That is 
this this type of bond can be part of it have an option to convert that into uh, equity shares on a future date and this future date uh, generally would be after one year okay now the, the there is another variation in the same category which is zero interest fully convertible debenture zero interest fully convertible debenture is more or less like the interest secured premium convertible bond but the difference here is this will be fully convertible will be automatically and mandatorily converted into share there is no option it's not partial it is fully converted into shares so that is uh, the basic difference between zero interest secured premium convertible bond and zero interest fully convertible debentures all these come under qualify under the category of deep discount bonds so deep discount bonds are those bonds that are issued by companies for uh, you know, for a, a huge discount and they do not carry interest rate the primary difference between zero interest bond and uh, deep discount bond is deep discount bonds are issued at a discount but they are for a longer period longer period than the zero interest uh, bond maybe 15 years generally it is 15 to 10 to 15 years okay So that's it and then we said about the variation of zero interest secured premium convertible bond where partially some of it have an option to convert that into equity shares after one year zero interest fully convertible debenture uh, it is uh, something where we have debenture is something that is issued by company that's the primary difference between bond uh, generally public institutions government bodies go with issue of bonds debentures are issued by companies uh, for meeting their uh, capital requirements so a uh, fully convert zero interest fully convert convertible debentures here you have the option to convert the entire it is not an option it is mandatory automatically and compulsorily it is converted into uh, into shares after the stipulated time so then uh, if the company think of issuing uh, or bringing a right issue right issue we know that the shares that are issued to the existing shareholders this category of uh, debenture holders who have already converted their shares into equity shares are eligible for such option they will receive such option like if they want they can go with additional purchase of shares because they will be automatically converted into equity shares Uh, after the stipulated time okay after the stipulated time and then they are eligible to receive this right issue option from the company also 